Hello everyone, I'm Rich Stonks. Today I'm teaching on 21 hindrances to health and healing. Don't go away, I'll be right back. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. We are proclaiming God and His Word as the one source of spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. Now, here's Rich. Good things come from the Father of life. Hello everyone, today we're continuing our series on 21 hindrances to health and healing. I want to say first of all, thank you Lord for all of our partners. All of you help me do what I do, which is send God's Word to other people. Uh, if you're enjoying this ministry, I want to encourage you to do two things. Number one, go to our YouTube channel, The Healthy Christian, Rich Stocks, The Healthy Christian, and subscribe. That helps us, and then you'll be notified when new videos come out. It doesn't obligate you, it's free of charge. If you like a particular video, give it the thumbs up. That's how we know the content that people are receiving from the most. And then also go to richstocks.org and watch our partner video called Becoming a Business Partner with God. That will be a great blessing to you. And then we have two other websites that I believe will be a great blessing to our friends and partners for nutrition and wellness. We have mineraldoctor.com. The, the ministry website, I think I mentioned it, it's, it's richstocks.org, richstocks.org. And then for health, uh, nutrition and wellness, it is mineraldoctor.com. For weight management, simple3slim.com. And since we're talking about health and healing, I want to encourage you to get my book called Simple 3 Slim. The Lord helped me reduce 43 pounds a couple of years ago, going two and a half years. I've kept it off uh, for this whole time. This will be a blessing to you. Many of the health challenges that you're dealing with would simply disappear by reducing some body weight. I know this from experience. Medical science would agree. It's just, it's a good thing. And the Lord reminded me of that, so I am reminding you. So we are teaching on, uh, where did we leave off? We were at hindrance number 14 last time, a lack of wisdom. And we stayed on that the entire lesson. So today, <clears throat> let's move on. Hindrance number 15, 21 hindrances to health and healing. Here is number 15 not mixing faith with the Word of God, not being a doer of the Word. Let's look at some scriptures. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, one of my favorite scriptures. I say that about a lot of scriptures, don't I? That's one of my favorites, one of my favorites. Well, they're all good, but there are a handful that really I seem to mention, no matter what topic you're teaching on, this particular scripture is relevant. You're getting ready to find out why. Hebrews 4, verse 2. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached. That's the good news. That's what I'm doing now. I am bringing to you the good news of health and healing. There are people who criticize us and what they call the faith camp because they say we preach a health and wealth gospel. Yes, that is correct. That is absolutely correct. We preach Jesus as our Savior. He is our healer. He is our provider that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, which includes health and wealth. So I am not ashamed of that. I certainly don't want to be a sickness and poverty preacher. So sin, sickness, and poverty are simply results of sin. Doesn't mean you've committed a particular sin. That's what brought it on you. Don't misunderstand me. It is a result of Adam's sin in the beginning. Had Adam never sinned, sickness and poverty would have never had an open door into this earth. That's where it all came from. And again, I want to say this again. Do not misunderstand me that when symptoms come in your life, that that means that you've sinned, you've opened the door. No, not at all. Sickness is going to come knocking on your door plenty of times. You're going to have plenty of opportunity to receive sickness and disease your entire life. I'm giving you an opportunity to receive the healing power of God. 
Because the problem's not on the sending end. We are not here trying to get God to send His healing power. We're here educating people about the fact that according to this book, before the foundation of the world, God's will concerning your health and healing was settled before the foundation of the world, before you were ever born. You don't have to ever say, Lord, is it your will to heal me? Read the will. This is God's last will and testament. Jesus, when he died, he left it. When do you get your inheritance? When you die, no, you get your inheritance when the person that left the inheritance died. When Jesus died, he left us his inheritance, which is eternal life, health, healing, prosperity, all of those things. I didn't plan to say any of that, but I'm not taking it back. Yes, I am a health and wealth preacher because that is part of the good news. The gospel, that's part of it. So it says here in Hebrews 4 verse 2, For unto us was the gospel, that's the good news preached, as well as unto them, talking about the children of Israel there in the wilderness, but the word preached, listen to this, it says the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now think about that with me for a moment. Everything you see was created by the Word of God, except for mankind. Mankind, the Bible says, God formed us with His hands. But the material He used, the dust of the earth, was still created with His words. The universe, the stars, the constellations, the, the celestial bodies, everything that you see. Your body has 38.2 trillion cells. And there are those that would like for you to believe that just there was a puff of smoke and a big bang and there you were. I said this on a previous lesson. It would be like going to a junkyard, detonating a, a big bomb, and out of that pile of rubble comes a brand new, shiny, perfect Mercedes that engine, everything in it is just perfect. Your body is even far more intricate than that. 38.2 trillion cells. Think about that. And all the universe was created by the Word of God. The Bible says God is upholding all things with the Word of His power. Of His power. The New Testament says the Word of God is quick, that means alive, sharper, it's alive and full of power, sharper than any two-edged sword. One translation says sharper than any surgeon's scalpel. The Word of God is all-powerful. But, having said that, according to this verse, as powerful as the Word of God is, it says the only way the good news can profit you, the only way the Word, it said the Word preached, did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Well, what does that mean, mixing faith? with the Word of God. How do you mix your faith with the Word of God? James chapter 1 verse 22 tells us. It says, But be ye doers of the Word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. <clears throat> now the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Many of you have heard that verse. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. When you hear the words of God, you are hearing the thoughts of God. In, in one parable, in Mark chapter 4, it's called the parable of the seed. Some call it the parable of the sower. I call it the master parable because Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, you will not understand anything else that I said. This is the key to understanding everything I'm teaching. That's what Jesus said. Mark chapter 4, the parable of the sower. Later, the disciples came to him and said, Lord, expound, explain to us this parable. And he did. And he said to them, the seed is the word of God. Think about that for just a moment. What is the word of God? The word of God is seed. Well, if God's words are seeds, all words must be seeds. God's word Jesus said, our seeds. What are seeds? Have you ever seen a seed? A seed 
is a container. It contains something. A seed contains a blueprint. In that little seed, no matter how small, is a blueprint, a design, to produce something. There is a blueprint to, to produce after its own kind. Inside of every apple seed, there is a blueprint. I don't know how to say it any other way. A blueprint, a design, a divine design to produce apples. That when that seed, in fact, in the, it's called the law of Genesis. Everything God made, he said he put seed in it. He put seed in man. The biology lesson here, the seed of man would be sperm. So what is seed? In that seed is another human being. Another human being. Where's the apple tree? In that seed. The forest. In that seed. In that one acorn. That one acorn's not just another oak tree, but there's a forest in there. Unlimited potential inside of a seed. Well, Jesus said God's words are seed. They're designed to produce after their own kind. God's not going to send his word to you and it produce sickness and poverty and sin in your life. No, it's going to do the opposite. Jesus said in John chapter 8, he said to those Jews that believed on him, he said, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed, and then you'll know the truth. and The truth will make you free. Well, the truth that I'm teaching today that God is sending to you through this, whatever medium you're listening, whether watching it, on TV, YouTube, listening by radio, God is sending His Word to you right now. But as powerful as it is, the only way it can profit you, faith will come if you'll keep listening. Now, some people reject the Word of God right as soon as they hear it. Now, I don't believe that. Well, that's fine. You don't have to worry about it. You won't be bothered with it. If you don't believe it, nobody's trying to make you believe it. Nobody's trying to twist your arm to believe anything. So if you don't believe it, you don't believe it. But even if you believe it, you have to mix faith with the words you're hearing. So when faith, when you hear the word of God, faith comes. Inside of that seed are God's thoughts. That's what I started to say earlier. Thank you, Lord. Inside of God's words. God's words are seeds, and inside of those seeds are God's thoughts. So when you're hearing God's words, you are hearing God's thoughts. And God's thoughts can reshape your thinking. God says, um, my thoughts are not as your thoughts. God's thoughts, as the heavens, as a scripture, I think it's in Isaiah, as the heavens are are so high above the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts, talking about mankind in general, <clears throat> so are my ways higher than your ways, says the Lord. That's what he said. So while we can never think like God, yeah, take God's thoughts, that's God's words, make them your own, and then eventually, guys, here's what I'm trying to get to, thoughts eventually become beliefs. Every word you're hearing is doing one of three things. It's either forming new beliefs, strengthening beliefs that you already have, or eroding beliefs that you have. That's what's happening when you hear words. <laughs> Here I go again. That's what's happening when you're watching the news. The words you hear on the evening news are either forming new beliefs, strengthening beliefs you already have, or eroding beliefs. I don't watch it. I'm encouraging you to stop watch. Turn it off. All of it. Turn it off. Turn it. I would rather watch a movie. I don't watch much TV at all, but I'd rather watch a movie as watch the news. At least you can say, oh, well, it's just a movie. Where's the news? You don't know how much is true, but people are accepting it as truth. No, Jesus defined truth for us in John 17, 17. He said God's word is truth. You want a definition for truth? There it is, straight from the lips of Jesus. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. But when you hear the truth, Jesus said, if you continue in it, it'll make you free. What does it mean to continue? Continue hearing? That's step one. You got to hear it. That's how faith comes. But then it says here in Hebrews 4, verse 2, for that word to profit you, no matter what the subject, all right? Here's a great example. When you heard the message of eternal life, 
Maybe you heard it many times before you believed it or received it, but there came a point, if you're a Christian, if you're not, we have a lot of videos. I think I have 14, 14 lessons on the free gift of eternal life on the Healthy Christian, the YouTube channel. So if you're not a Christian, <clears throat> avail yourself to that on our website. We have it printed out step by step, what you're going to do. But there, if you're watching me and you are a believer, there came a time you did more than just hear the good news. There came a point in your life where you acted on it. You, faith was coming. Faith was coming. You're hearing. You're hearing God's thoughts. You're hearing God's words. It's changing your thoughts. Beliefs are being formed, but there had to come a point for you to be a Christian. There comes a point in your life where you mix faith with the words you're hearing. You act on that word. Well, it's the same way with God's word concerning health and healing. For this word to profit you, to be profitable, for you to receive health and healing, you have to mix faith with it. You can't just say, yes, I believe it. We, many of you, we could put you on a, I say this often, on a polygraph, a lie detector. So that, do you believe by his stripes you're healed? Yes. And it would show, yeah, you really do. But do you believe you have received the healing power? Go, well, no, I believe God's going to. Well, there's your problem. But to this hindrance here, hindrance number 15, we're talking about mixing faith with the word of God being a doer of the Word of God. Last time I talked about the wisdom of God, which is very similar, goes right hand in hand with this. James 1 verse 5, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Ask God what? Ask God what to do. Lord, what do you want me to do? I know Jesus took my infirmities, bare my sicknesses. By His stripes I'm healed. I know you sent your Word and healed me. I know that your Word is helped to all my flesh, that every cell of my body is being upheld, maintained, propelled, sustained, energized by the living, powerful Word of God. But what do you want me to do? Well, that's what we're talking about here. Be doers of the Word, it says, James 1.22, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So if you think all you have to do is listen to these lessons, that's the starting point. But there could be something for you to do, acting on God's Word. We have a great lesson there on the Healthy Christian YouTube channel called God's Medicine. In fact, I think it's called God's Prescription for Divine Health, Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22. On that lesson, that's what we talk about there, how you take God's Word like medicine. You know, it'd be the same way. You go to the doctor. I'm not against medical science. That's not my first thought when symptoms attack my body. I ask the Lord when symptoms, Lord, do I need to go for a medical checkup? Do I need to, to go see a, a medical professional? You ought to ask him that. Don't assume that he wants you to. Don't assume he doesn't want you to. Just ask him in every situation. But if you went and the doctor gave you a prescription, for that prescription to work for you, guess what you have to do? You would have to mix faith with it in the sense of mixing some kind of action. That's what I'm trying to get to. Faith is what you believe, but when it says mixing faith with the word, I am convinced it's talking about what we're reading here, you mixing corresponding action. Listen to this, James 2, verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, is it still a body? Yep, it's just a dead body. On these days, if you leave your body, your body's going to fall over and everybody's going to say, oh, so-and-so's dead. You're not dead. You're alive somewhere. Hopefully you received the Lord and the free gift and we would know where you are with the Lord. What the Apostle Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But we call it death. No, the body is dead. That's what it says here, James 2, 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Other translations say this, Weymouth in particular, faith without corresponding action. I'm thinking of examples someone gave. I don't know if it's true or not. It could be just a modern-day parable. Someone was pushing, had a tightrope across this uh, steep, this deep ravine, a long way down, pushing, walking back and forth, pushing a wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow back and forth, uh, doing tricks. And people are watching and applauding. And this guy says, 
How many of you believe I could push this wheelbarrow across with someone in it? Oh, of course, everyone did. They've been watching him do all of his tricks, getting fancy out there. Sure, everybody, yeah, they're clapping. Yes, we believe. He said, who wants to get in? <laughs> How many of you realize that changes everything? Well, I believe, I believe, I believe. Now, we talked in one of these lessons about fake faith. You don't just go throw your medicine away because someone else did. The Lord could lead you to do it. I know people, he's led them to do it. He may never lead you to do that. So you don't just do something silly, but you find scriptures that cover your case and you act on those. Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22 is the best one. It's not in these notes right here, but is on that lesson, God's prescription for divine help. It talks about giving attention to his word, inclining your ear to what he says, keeping his word before your eyes. Well, those are action verses. Those are things I can do. And he could lead you to do something else. I've said it on several of these lessons about my foot was hurting. Lord, what do you want me to do? He says, go home. Didn't hear an audible voice, but this thought came up inside of me. I knew it wasn't my thought. I forgot I owned those shoes. How, how could I just think of that? No, it was the Lord. Go home, put those shoes on. A couple of days, your foot will be fine. And it was. What was I? Well, I was a doer of the word. I did what he led me to do. Doers of the word of God. Again, one translation says faith without corresponding actions. What actions would correspond with the faith, with your beliefs, so that you can mix faith with the Word of God. That's how it profits you. Listen to the advice that Mary, the mother of Jesus, gave just before Jesus did his first public miracle. John chapter 2, verse 5. This is where he turned the water into wine. His mother said to the servants, you know, they ran out of wine. They're at a, a wedding. I watched a movie about this recently. It was a modern, very, the, the, it was really nice. Watching it, I mean, you can read these things, but watching it and see, this was going to be an embarrassment. Here there's this big wedding, there's this big feast. They're out of wine. Jesus did this for one reason only. Well, his mother asked him to do it. He, first he said, hey, my time hasn't come yet. But he turned the water into wine just to help those hosting that banquet, that wedding, to avoid the public shame and embarrassment. Jesus did it. First public miracle was one of material nature, turning water into wine. But the key, the secret was this, and for you as well, my friend, listening to me today, his mother said, whatever he says to you, just do it. Well, when you ask God for wisdom, like we taught in the last lesson, if you hadn't watched that one, go back, watch it. This is lesson number eight and lesson number seven. We spent the entire lesson talking about asking God for wisdom, asking him what to do. And then whatever he says to do, do it. He could lead you to particular scriptures, quote these scriptures, stand, taking God's word like medicine. I have several that every day I speak to my body and I say scriptures. Like body, hear my voice. Jesus has purchased your freedom from the curse of the law. That includes every sickness named and not named. So hear me, and I speak to those symptoms, according to Mark eleven twenty three. 23, come out of my body. I do it a lot. Every time I feel a pain, an ache, any kind of a symptom, I act on the word. I don't just say, oh, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? No, act on God's word. Faith requires corresponding action. You act on God's Word. There's more than just praying, my brother and sister. There's a time to pray. There's a time to say. That means you speak to those symptoms in your body. And then there is a time to simply obey. Simply act on God's Word. Mix faith with the Word of God. This is the key to experiencing the supernatural healing power of God. Being a doer of the Word, that's how you mix faith with the Word. Hindrance number 16, condemnation. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 21 and 22, 1 John chapter 3, verse 21 and 22, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then, this is an if, then, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. 
Well, what if your heart does condemn you? Confidence is going to be weak. Right? It's an if then. If our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence, then we have confidence toward God. If your heart does condemn you, you're not going to have much confidence in your prayers, in God, in receiving your health and healing. So this is a hindrance. Condemnation is a huge hindrance to health and healing. I told you about the friend of mine, the time he threw his medicine away, then he started having severe symptoms. The wife called, I go over there, and he pulled out a sheet of paper. I mean, I got my book here, this and that, but he pulled out a sheet of paper and he's waving that thing around. And I said, what's that? <clears throat> he had a list. He said that the Lord, first of all, God did not lead him to throw his medicine away. All right? He just did it because someone else did it. That's fake faith. We've talked about that. But then he had this list and he said that God showed him all these things in his life that weren't right and that he had to make right before God would heal him. I said, get your medicine out of the garbage. You're going to die. That wasn't God giving him that list. The Bible says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Once you're born again, God doesn't even remember your sins. How could he be giving him a list of sins when your sins, we've got a lesson on that on the YouTube channel. All your sins are gone forever. The moment you receive Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ washes all your sins away. I, even the one you're going to commit five minutes after this video is over, it's already been taken care of. It's already taken care of. You may sin later day and not even know you sin. It might be years later. So, oh my goodness, I spoke harshly to that person. A lot of things like that. But it's the condemnation will keep you from receiving. It, it got, God wasn't, that condemnation was keeping that man from receiving his healing. It wasn't keeping God from giving it. God had already given it. It was keeping him from receiving. Why? You won't have any confidence toward God. Can you believe we're already out of time? Time flies on this on this broadcast. It is just amazing. I want to encourage you to get my book, Simple 3 Slim. It will help you with your health and healing just by reducing body weight. High blood pressure, blood sugar problems can all disappear. A lot of times just by doing that. Hey, we're out of time. One of my favorite scriptures, 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. If you enjoy this teaching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For additional teachings by Rich Stocks and to help us send God's Word to others, visit our website at richstocks.org. You can also send your praise reports, prayer requests, and questions through our website. The website is richstocks.org. That's richstocks.org.